Hey fellow submission peeps, in today's video we'll be doing bleach t-shirts with extra vibrant printing due to using Poly T Plus from Dye Press, uh, which is a product used to dye sub on cotton. Uh, it's a popular product that I've noticed a lot of people using and, and there's some confusion about how to do it so I figured we'd clear that up with this video, especially with the bleach t-shirts. Um, shout out to Dye Press for making such a terrific product. Uh, they didn't sponsor this video in any way or anything. Uh, matter of fact, I paid full price just like everybody else. You know, nothing special. Um, I've always been super excited to try it and I'm glad I finally got a chance to. Um, always see Rachel from Dye Press just uh, helping out with the community whether it's for a customer or not. Uh, she's a really good ambassador to their, you know, to their brand and it's just fantastic overall. Um, as always, I'll drop a link in the description on how you can do the, get the Dye Press uh, products and everything. Uh, we'll be going through this entire process. Uh, it's, it's a multi-step process, it's a little complicated. Uh, it goes, you have to do bleaching, you have to wash, dry, you have to apply the Poly T, uh, Poly -T Plus, and then you have to do the dye sublimation on it. So it's it's a bit of a process, but uh, it, the results are pretty cool. Um, this can also be done without the Poly T Plus, uh, but there's, it just adds a little, that little extra kick to it. Um, and I'll, I'll throw a photo up on the screen. Uh, this is the same design, same t-shirt, and this is with and without the Poly T Plus. Um, the, to, to do it without it, you, you actually did a sublimation first, which seems incredibly wrong and it doesn't seem right. But, uh, but you got to trust me on this. Just do sublimation first, then bleach it and it won't turn, it'll turn out, uh, I actually have one here. This is actually without dye press. This is one that was dye, it was dye sub first and then bleached. And then I'll actually show the difference between the two. You can see the difference. It, it's it's a huge difference. Let me, let me get the same part of it. Just the blacks are blacker. Overall, it's just better quality with the dye press. Um, but yeah, well, we'll go ahead and get into the process and we'll show you exactly how to do this. All right, guys, in this next step, you're going to need a couple materials. It's kind of a complicated project, so you'll need more than usual. Uh, you'll need, a, obviously, a sublimation print. I used uh, A-Sub Paper Cosmos Ink to do my design. Uh, you'll need a t-shirt, obviously. Uh, we'll explain that a little a little bit more in the next step. You'll need one spray bottle of diluted one-to-one uh, -one bleach and water. You'll need one spray bottle of Poly T Plus. It'll be diluted to the directions. You'll need one spray bottle of hydrogen peroxide, uh, full strength, not diluted at all. You'll need parchment paper, butcher paper. Uh, granted, you could probably use parchment paper for both if you really had to. Also use copy paper, and obviously you'll need a heat press. All right, guys. Uh, the important thing to remember when you're when you're buying these shirts, um, I, I got mine from Clothing Shop Online. Great store, pretty fast shipping, very good prices as as you can see down here. Just phenomenal prices, even on the even on like two X and but the prices on the smaller sizes are amazing. Um, but what you'll want to do is you'll only want the heather ones uh, because like the antique and sports gray are 90% cotton, 10% polyester. You're not going to get a good print off those. I mean, you could probably use the poly T plus and probably do just fine with it. Uh, but the heather colors are 65, 35, uh, the graphite heather, you could probably get by with poly T and do just fine. But the, those heather colors that are right off right here in the middle, you know, heather red, you know, I, I bought a little bit of everything so we could give it a try. First, let's start out by bleaching the shirts. We got these uh, these Gildan soft style Heather t-shirts, and they actually work pretty darn good. I, I really do like them. They're really nice. We'll start with this guy, with this purple one right here. Yeah. You can see it's kind of a, they're pretty cool. We have a little bit of wind going that direction, so I'll just stand with it at the back. Um, first thing we have is bleach diluted one-to-one uh, -one with water and hydrogen peroxide that's uh, full strength and I usually make this little template just uh, it, it's about a 11 by 15 just just so I know kind of what it's going you know what area I need to bleach and such a little bit more windy than I thought that's okay though so the first thing I do is I put my cardboard box inside of this
And what we'll be doing, we'll be doing the a method where we do uh, where we bleach first, and then we do uh, and and then we do our sublimation on it using uh, using the chemical, which is known as uh, you know poly poly T plus, and we'll go from there. So we'll go ahead and get this set and looking good on there. We'll go ahead and get it good and flat. It don't matter if it has some wrinkles because that's gonna actually add some character to it. Um, I'll get these kind of far out of the way so we don't mess them up. I'm trying to bleach. And the wrinkles are gonna give it a little bit of character, actually. That uh, squared up nice and neat so it doesn't really soak through very much. And for visual reference, we want about that much done. So we'll bleach it, then we'll move it up. And we want to usually go about two to two to three fingers down from the collar. So we want to go about right there. All right, I have a pretty good visual reference so that it, where that is. So we'll go ahead and grab our bleach and we'll get to spraying. We'll style in more of a spray. And you'll see the bleach will start to work almost immediately. And then we'll hit it with some uh, some gentle streaks. Just give it a, just some character is what we're looking for. So we'll go ahead and give that some character. And we're getting it just good and soaked. hit with a little more just a couple little squirts where it'll just kind of give it a little character and we'll go ahead and let that set for a minute and you can see the bleach is starting to work its magic already oh that's a lot it smells very bleachy out here. And as you can see, it's about that. You know, maybe a little bit more down here. Maybe a little bit around the edges. But we're good and saturated on that side. So that's gonna look really good. We'll just, uh, We'll give that a couple minutes and let that soak in and we'll uh, we'll check on it in a minute. Guys, this one's done the exact same way, but in the interest of time, I just went ahead and did like almost like a time lapse uh, to go ahead and speed it up. But it's done the exact same way as that purple shirt. All right, the next step after, and you see how nice this one turned out. It, it bleached out quite well. The next step is to take undiluted hydrogen peroxide. And that's not enough. There we go. No. And just kind of soak it. And this will uh, this will stop the bleaching effect altogether. It'll completely stop it. So then you can set it to the side, and we can go wash that next. So I'll go ahead and do these other shirts, and uh, and we'll show you what they look like after they're uh, bleached and ready. All right, after
after bleaching and peroxiding, my phone decided to uh, run out of battery, so I wasn't able to record what I would happen next. But basically, um, Goofy Me forgot there was a load of laundry in the washing machine, so I was not able to do the typical uh, machine wash with water only and then do just kind of a, a medium heat dry cycle to get them good and dry. So what I ended up doing was I went to the to the nearest empty bathtub and I, I just gave them a quick rinse, uh, washed them as good as I could and kind of wrung them out and hung them up to air dry overnight. Um, that, that works. I mean, this is basically the same thing, so it's fine. Uh, but here's here's an example of how they come out. This one is the uh, this is the uh, Heather Seafoam shirt, and it, it looks really good. I mean, it's it's good and consistent, and it has the right amount of character. You know, you want these little flaws right here just because it, it gives it character, and I really like that. Uh, next up is probably my favorite, the Heather Roy Royal. You can see how that turned out. It's pretty cool. It's got a good amount of character. Uh, one I'm less happy about is the the Heather Navy. Uh, it looks more graphite, but see, it has a it has a weird, like almost like an orangish color, an orangish tint when it, when you bleach it. So I don't know. I don't know about the navy, and it doesn't really look navy. It looks more charcoal or graphite even. But this one, I, I might do something for like a like a Halloween shirt or something. That's, that's what I think would be cool there. Uh, this one is the Heather Purple. I, I like it, but you would have to be really picky about what design you put on it. But it looks pretty good. You know, got some good got some good markings and stuff on there. It looks really nice. And then my other favorite is the Heather Red, which uh, is a nice Christmas shirt. I didn't quite do enough, but it's fine. I'll, we'll design to make it work. And it'll be pretty cool. This is a large, so it's a little, a little small on me, but you know. But yeah, that's how they come out. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get to the next process, which is the uh, applying the Poly T Plus to that. And Poly T Plus is a treatment for fabric. Um, you can find it. I'll, I'll link the uh, the website down below, and you'll be able to check it out. But they include uh, instructions with it and everything. It's it's great stuff. You'll see just how good this really is. And you can do it on straight cotton, but it really helps the uh, these shirts, which are 65% polyester, uh, 35 cotton, really pop. So we'll go ahead and get that process, and I'll show you how that works. The design we're going to be putting on this shirt, you've probably seen me do this design before, and somebody requested a shirt done like this, so we'll go ahead and knock that out. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and print it. We're printing it on a sub paper. Uh, on uh, premium presentation matte settings, you know, reversing all that. I'll take you through the print settings real quick. Nothing special. Same thing I always use. Uh, 11 by 17 premium presentation matte, high quality uh, mirror image, advanced ICM image options, none of that. So just, you know, just basic stuff. Nothing special. And we'll go ahead and print that and get that going. That way we can go ahead and uh, get, every, get it done. All right, guys, we can move on to uh, making said shirt now. We're going to do that uh, the Halo Red one first, and this is the design that's going on it. This is what the customer wanted. So we're going to place it about there, and you can see exactly how that's going to look when it's done. So the first thing we do, this is just me. Usually, I put a piece of paper in the shirt itself. This is just uh, butcher paper. So, I usually just put that in there. That way, it doesn't soak to the other side. And it requires a little less to get it good and saturated. So, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and get that situated in there. All right, perfect. We got paper all the way up to right here. So it's just about perfect. So we're actually quite covered. Go ahead and pull the bottom out a little bit. There we go. And next thing we do is uh, we go ahead and preheat the press to 330 degrees 
And we're gonna be doing it at 30 seconds just for the initial dry. But first we need to get, get this t-shirt good and saturated. So we use a, let's loosen it up a little bit. And you just spray it till it's damp. So just make sure you get a good, generous coating on it first time. And see, that's uh, that feels pretty good, actually. Good, generous coating. That feels pretty good. And you can see it's visibly damp. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on that, but I can definitely see it. We'll go ahead and give it a little bit more. There we go. That should be just fine. And we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and set up and give it a press real quick. All right, guys. Uh, now we'll be giving it a press. So what we'll do is uh, this time we're using parchment paper. To, uh, to keep it from sticking. And we're, again, we're doing 330 degrees at 30 seconds. And we're just gonna take this and put it on there the best we can. And it's a little tough to get it to a wet t-shirt to slide, but we're gonna try. There we go. All right, we're gonna try to get it good and flat as possible. We're gonna go ahead and uh, make sure we're good and centered up. Make sure that's good. All right. Now we're gonna cover it with parchment paper on the other side. That should be perfect. Now we're only doing it for 30 seconds at 330 degrees and you'll hear some sizzling and you'll see some steam and that's how you know you got enough. <laughs> All right, our press just went off so we're going to go ahead and, uh, we're going to go ahead and get that. And there we go. Now it's nice and uh, tacked up. That looks really light in the middle, the bleaching does. That looks really weird now, but yeah. Uh, next step is to mist it again. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, let's see, mist, uh, we're gonna mist it again, second coat and then we'll be good to go. While we just a quick mist, put our parchment paper down again. Oh, don't need to do that. And we're gonna do 20 seconds. Since we're not doing nearly as heavy of a, we're gonna buckle the press down a little bit harder too. There we go. We're gonna do that for 20 seconds just to get it good and dry. And then we'll sublimate on it. All right, so there we go. Got a little bit more steam. We'll go ahead and do that. No sticking. Looks pretty decent. It's still, it's a little wet, so it's kind of, it's bleeding through and it's a little red. But it's fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be just fine. All right, now we're heating our press back up to 385 to do the final press. And what I usually like to do at this stage, especially on anything but a kid's shirt, I do just, I wrap it around the heat press. That's what I usually do with my little 15 by 15 inch heat press. There we go. Try to 
try to get, and this is, I'm using butcher paper in between. That way you can protect the heat press and not get anything on it. And see, it'll, it goes on there pretty decently. Make sure you got everything good and centered. We good. All right. So go ahead and prep that guy. Usually just to be sure. I do a couple pieces of part of regular printer paper in there just to, just to be certain that no ink gets through to the heat press or the cushion on bottom of the heat press, rather. There we go. And this time we're gonna do a little firmer press. Um, but yeah, I think we're ready to go. We'll just wait for it to get up to temperature and we'll go ahead and press it. And this time we're only pressing at 60 seconds as well. Um, yep, actually 70 seconds, sorry. 70 seconds instead of 20, because 20 is not gonna be nearly enough. There we go. So the 385 at 70 seconds is what the poly T calls for. So we're gonna go ahead and put that, go ahead and get our sub stuff. Actually, I prefer to go ahead and cut me out a piece of this. After doing all that prep work, I'd prefer a quick pre-press just to, uh, you know, just to make sure we're good. Quick pre-press. We're going to need a little more pressure tonight, though. Good about a little 10 second pre-press to get everything nice and flat for the sub. There we go. Everything's nice and flat. Looking super good. Go ahead and get our stuff on there. Put our design on there. I don't use tape or anything on shirts. I usually just put it on there. You can usually get it centered, eyeball centered on a 15 by 15 press very easily. And that's about two fingers down from the collar. Yeah, just the usual. Press is chirping at me, I don't like it. But we'll go ahead and press this guy. I'll put another piece up there just to protect that corner. Alright. Well, a little more pressure. There we go. Alright, we'll go ahead and press that and see what it looks like. And then uh and then what we'll do is we'll do a wash cycle and then come back and look at look at it after the poly tea and everything. Alright guys, coming up on just a couple seconds left, we'll go ahead and get this heat press open and show you what our final product looks like. All right. We're gonna try not to touch the heat press. That would be really cool. And bam. And a nice, very vivid shirt. Made possible by Poly T. So we'll go ahead and I'll get this on the table and you can see what it really looks like. Alrighty, um, after everything, uh, that's what we come up with. There's still a little paper stuck to there, but we'll, that'll come out in a wash cycle. But, uh, but yeah, that's how, that's how it's done. And overall, it has some very vivid colors, really nice. Uh, but we'll do a wash cycle real quick along with the other shirts and, uh, and we'll get that, we'll show you exactly what it looks like after it's washed. All right, guys, we prepped uh, several shirts, but we got a couple of those done and I wanna show those to you. Uh, we'll start out with the, with the greenish shirt. I did the baby, it's COVID outside on it. We'll see if we can step back a little bit. And you can see, I mean, most of the stuff, nothing comes to the back really, uh, but the front of it has good, it has a lot of character with the with the way the, the uh, bleaching is and everything, just looks good overall. 
Um, the purple, uh, the purple didn't get as white when you bleached it, but it still looks pretty darn cool. And I did the uh, the famous TikTok song. Uh, my mother-in-law actually is going to end up with a shirt, I believe. But yeah. And you'll see the thing about darker colors is you can get some really cool effects if you look around the shirt, all the little spots just from the the bleach that really uh, is accentuated by the dark color. And this is the actual red one that we made in the video. And I mean, overall, it looks really good. I'm very happy with it. Um, but yeah, but uh, it, of course, always, uh, if you like the content, uh, drop me a subscribe, uh, drop a like on the video, you know, for future, for future content update. You know, I make stuff all the time. It's kind of my jam. Really fun for me. I, I enjoy it. I don't. I don't really sell it a whole lot, but I enjoy making it and I enjoy the process behind it, and I enjoy video making. So, so yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Uh, see y'all next time.